Well, tonight's COVID-19 seminar is MP, Akata MP, uh, meaning the flying swallow. We have our guest star tonight will be Mike Jacobs, who will be helping me out with the kata movements and first we'll do the kata half speed together. If you have room, please, please uh, perform with us. Each knee sun she go rook sheet huts ko each knee sun she go rook tai she each knee, sun, chi, go, look, each, each, knee, sun, chi, go, look, chi, ha, ko, jo, each knee, sun, ha, chi, naori. Yoi is a bow and stand ready. Okay, in the old days, in the, the 50s, they bowed, then did heian, heian type yoi, and then came to uh, disposition. All right, first, first move, each. Right, important thing about this move is your right hand, you're, you're looking 45 degrees, your right hand is get on right, 45 degrees, your butt has to be pushed well forward, and your left hand is in position similar to knife hand block, it's a come on. The bunkai for this first movement is uh, well, threefold. One, this, this action could can mean that you're blocking a low kick, perhaps side thrust kick to your knee, where you can't normally block. And this could be a side thrust kick coming from the front or from diagonal. It could be coming from that direction or it could be coming from the front. Okay. Second meaning is that the opponent's attacking lunge punch. This one you're ducking under, if he's punching to face, you just duck under the punch and you catch his knee here. And that can be attacked from the front or 45 degrees, even possible if you adjust your stance from the side. But the original, most common original bunkai is from opponents coming from some 45 or, but more likely from the side. And the motion starts like a uh, jill, where you, you grab the fist and you pull, pull, block and pull the opponent's fist, and then he's coming in like this, and then you hit to the outside of his front knee. Okay? Because you're pulling his fist, you're doing this to him, because you're twisting. So in doing so, if you twist to here, you've turned him all the way over and you can easily throw the opponent. So that's original bunkai okay, for this kata. Now, in the, in the, in the Karate Do Kyohan, he looked completely to the right in his first move. Okay, so, so this is the this is, I assume, as original as we're going to get for the way the first move is. By the time the best karate days came, they were looking 45 degrees. Okay. So either one of these could mean that the opponent's attacking from the side or from the uh, from 45 degrees. In uh, in uh, best karate, they went with their 
left knee fairly close to the, or right knee fairly close to the left heel. But now they come down with the left foot advancing a little farther, more square. Okay, this, this more square uh, uh, way that the Sensei Mike's doing now means that you're moving a little bit farther to the, to the left and it means that it actually is more in keeping with the pulling, the throwing part of the technique than the blocking part of the technique because you're moving away from the block. It, now, in, in my own past, we looked forward when we did this move. Okay, and some, and some of us had the left hand against the right elbow. Some of us taught this way. I can find no, uh, no record of this, this technique. So it's not an augmented block. These shouldn't be touching. And, uh, but, but back in the 50s, they did look forward. So since the Funakoshi looked right, then uh, somewhere in the middle they look forward and then they start looking 45 degrees. Okay, and this one important thing is that uh, the stance is a little bit wide, hachichi-dachi, because you stand straight up and still looking 45 degrees at where your opponent was. These two movements are done in fairly quick order. One, two. Okay. In the old days, they were, the second one was done slowly. Okay. And some people may still be doing it that way, but it's been a while since anybody has actually done that movement slowly. Okay. From here, next to a lot of the MP is pretty is done in pairs, so the first two are fairly quick. The next two are done very quickly, okay? But, which is easier said than done, especially since the first technique from here is very much, except it's on the other side, from here, like the first movement, Aeon Shoda. And so I'll re repeat what I said, Aeon Shoda, how can it, how does a white belt need to do it versus how does a black belt need to learn to do it. So it seems like a simple move, but so beginners, of course, we have to make sure that they are fully, oh, the hand show it inside, fully extended here so that they make the biggest move possible, okay? But this movement from here to here is effectively the same as if you started back here and went to here, you're effectively three quarters of the way to the end of the movement, which means you are at the end of the movement. That means that your hip, which is in every movement snaps at the end, must snap immediately. That means your leg must go immediately to its position. That means your arms have to snap like very fast if all three of these components are going as fast as they can to get to because it's a short movement you really got to move so to do this black belts have to practice going fast and slow and ask yourself did you did you not did you come all the way up here for the down or did you only come part way so you do it fast, and you do it slow. Then you slow down a little bit so you can get the arm movement completely in. You have to do the full movement. And then go fast again. And keep trying to get the full move, arm movement without slowing down your hip, which has to fire the leg up then. Or your step. Of course, white belts and black belts, nobody can, should be lifting their arm first and then moving. Nobody should be turning toward the target and then moving. Everything happens, boom. Just the same speed it takes to snap your fingers. Then you're, then you're doing it okay. Uh, second point on this, down, this particular down block, so I'll face this way. It's, it, this is a very narrow stance, okay? Reason being, 
you the camera are are the uh, are if you and the camera are my opponent, I can't go pick a wide stance and go off the line. The line was here. The opponent's coming here. Okay, so I have to stay on that line. So you can't take the the uh, right foot out too much. Okay, and then then the adjustment. After, from here, the adjustment with the left foot is almost nothing. So if you're going way up and then way back, you're dogging it, okay? Um, it's much quicker than that, and it's the, the stance is more narrow than that. And I said before, black belts, once they get flexibility in their hip, can make narrow stances without sacrificing a lot of stability. This, this movement, in the, in the textbook says it's a miso nagari kamai. That means it's a water flow ready position, which is a little bit, little bit strange to me because because it's done quickly and with focus, effectively being kagesuki like a teki. So just to understand that they mean this to mean a kamai, and this kind of kamai position was common in the old days, meaning, for example, if you're, if you're fighting an opponent here, this position of the arm is also protecting your solar plexus and guts from an opponent coming from the front. So this is just a more stylized version of the same thing. It can be considered a protection position. Okay, next set of moves. Uh, next set of moves is the uh, signature combination for this kata. It's a down block and rising punch, agisuki, and kosadachi step open hand, kosadachi step forward punch, geita. Down block, but lean way over. Then the down block facing the other way. Okay. The uh, doing it again. This is the part of the kata that really looks like the flying swallow, and that's because it's it's moving in all kinds of directions. But also, you can you can see how it's using using space effectively, distance effectively to ward off two opponents. First one opponent comes from the front, kicking. Then the rising punch means the opponent's punching face, and you block it similar to a, to a basai dai. It, it blocks the, first blocks their arm, and then rises up under their chin. Then you grab the opponent's collar, and you strike to to the low area, and I'll explain why that later. Why did I move into the opponent? Why did he move into the opponent? Because he detected the other opponent behind him starting claws on him, so he wanted to get away from that opponent. Next, he now this one do it again. This one means that the opponent's grabbing his wrist, and he's he's releasing the grip, but ducking down. So in this case, the reason he's ducking down is no reason except if the opponent on the front side of him now maybe swang something on his head, okay? But then the opponent comes back, same opponent on his, comes back with a kick, and he blocks that opponent. So effectively dealing with both two opponents at the same time. In the, in the oldest videos that I saw from the 50s, they, they made, Put the, did their hand in a circle and actually slowly and actually showed they were grabbing somebody before they initiated the punch. So. And then, back again, thank you. Somewhere around the best karate times, you see people start just opening the hand first and then making the punch. But now, JK has streamlined many of these kind of moves in the kata. So now you have to open the hand as you're moving forward. 
Same, same as the open hand movements and a rising block in that uh, hand shoulder. Okay. Now, the people that were doing this in the, in the old days, I don't believe that they thought, really thought that you had time to go like this, grab the opponent's coat and then punch him without something bad happening before you got done. I think they were just trying to trying to accentuate, as we have other kinds of slow movements in the cockpit, which in application are done quickly, they're just trying to accentuate what the, what the boom kind of is. So it's, don't think of it as a naive, <laughs> it's, just, it's just different. Okay. Agisuki rising punch starts like chudan punch. Starts like a chudan punch and then just as the elbow is about to straighten, you change the Jodan target. So it's kind of a late grip. A late switching of the target. It allows it to come up under the chin. Uh, so don't do this kind of thing. Don't go down, go straight and just a little bit up, just a little hooking upward. This one is Geta because if you're grabbing the opponent by the collar or something and you pull him forward, there's no target here anymore. Just here. Okay? So if you're going to pull your opponent down, you can't punch Chudan very well unless you come uppercut or something. So that's why it's a gate on punch. After this point, now, when you come to the next stance, now the stance is almost in one line, it's okay to shorten up and make it a normal width when you make the down. Okay, so first narrow, then a little bit wider. Okay, so one set of those and then another one. Repeat. Next movement, big sweeping action, and striking and kiyot. Okay, so important thing about this part is from the sweep, from the dance block. Your, this whole thing is supposed to be a, a fake maneuver. Okay, so it's important that the first movement is very grand and large, ridiculously large. So your right arm comes downward to make as big a circle as possible. Then your right knee and right elbow must follow each other's course. Okay. At this point you're looking 45 degrees and approximately at your palm of your hand or your wrist, then striking. Your right knee should still be 45 degrees. Your strike is 45 degrees. Then, tate shuto uke. Uh, because your body is moving to the right, this one will not be at the center. This one will be straight off your left shoulder. Okay, do it again. So, tate shuto oke, because you're moving to the right, you want your left arm to be straight out from the left shoulder, not, not down the center like basai dai. So, the whole purpose of this one, from here to here, is supposed to be inviting your opponent, fake, uh, fake inviting your opponent to attack to your ribs. In Karate do Kyohan is pretty much the way we do it now, in that they're looking this way. But I was originally taught to come all the way to the side and look to the side, which is much more inviting the opponent to attack because you're not looking at him. But um, I also don't know where it came from because it went away pretty quick. Okay, so now for sure you want to be 45 degrees. How people should, uh, black belts need to practice this. 
how, how, if you're coming up with your arm and coming onto one leg, the only way you're going to get any kind of focus and stability is if your weight is dropping, meaning you focus down at the same time. So you have to stay level because you start from this position. You want to stay down as much as you can and don't let your shoulders rise. And make sure that you train yourself to actually make some noise with this one. And really feel it. Because you're supposed to stop it. Stop, then go. Okay? Okay, from there. And the double punch. And down block. And the rising punch. And the knife and block. And the pull the right foot back and knife and block again. And the knife and block stepping forward. Alright, punch, sorry, and knife and block. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're in the part of the kata where before we're jumping around and, and throwing our weight back and forth and looking very fancy and all of a sudden the kata gets basic. And this is, this is the place, whenever kata gets basic, and it was fancy, this is the place where the people who shine can still shine. And the people who, uh, the people who are just being flashy but don't have good basics kind of fall apart. Talk about knife hand block being such that you have to wait, you're moving, moving forward, knife and block, you have to wait the hip until you get to the end of the movement. Okay? So, and your arms have to really go fast. Okay? Not, don't pick up the arm first and then go like this, which is very common, even some black belts. This kind of one, two, one, two. Your feet have to go as fast as they can. And your hip, hip turns with the downswing, the downswing of the block. So please train yourself to do that. But this one becomes especially difficult because we're pulling back to here and then making this one. Okay, so you, you really have to, very few people, going full speed, can do this position perfectly with the feet together and the heels on the ground. But don't kid yourself. If the world champion competitors sometimes have their feet apart a little bit or, or uh, heels come up a little bit, it's the one who does it closest to the, the best way that's going to get the best score. So. Don't say, nobody can do it, so I'm not going to try to do it. Keep trying to do the correct form on that one. Because you got to be, you want to be as close to drawing all the way back to here before, before you initiate the next block. Okay, next we repeat the sequence. Down block, rising punch, and and go. Then, Teisho, Pushi Agi Uke, pushing up the lock with the palm of the hand, or the palm heel of the hand. And again, adjustment step, Teisho, Pushi Agi Uke, and Geidan, Osai Uke, again. And again. Okay, elements. First, don't copy uh, WKF. Some people make a very exaggerated motion with these things. You have to go directly to, to the block. Sometimes you have to, in this case, the block is approximately chewed on level. So, I have to drop it down a little bit to make the, 
the block, but I don't want it not too low or it will be too, too late. So these, these actions, make sure that they're up and down and approximately uh, next to your side. Okay, some people push these, this one will push forward, and this one will dry in, or do something, but they have to go, they're vertical, up and down. The text, once again, I completely don't understand it because now there's three of these. No, it's four. One, two, three, four. Uh, well, this one is only Oshiagiuke. The text says this is Oshiagiuke and this is Oshiagiuke. It says chew it on for both of them and I can't be right. Okay, this is Osayuke and that's what it says in best karate. And it's Gia, yeah, this is down here. Okay. And Osai means pressing, and uh, Oshiagi, Oshi means pushing, and Agi means rising. So this cannot be uh, Oshiagi Uke. So the text is wrong, notated if you have the text. So one's coming up and one's going down. Uh, this one, in, in the old days, they just went straight to this movement. Now, we have an adjustment step. Important thing about this adjustment step, like many of our adjustment steps, is go ahead, watch the world champions. Some of them do it wrong. Their upper body should not rise or change position. So because we're in front stance, this one is not very, it's not much of a step before you go into this motion. Okay, it's a very small adjustment step, but it's there, it's necessary. Um, second point, ideally, you want to be moving your feet and hands at the same time. But the, in front stance, because your weight's going forward, it's kind of hard to do. So, but do not settle your weight. Keep your supporting leg bent until you're done, done with the block. Don't settle your weight forward until you're done with the block. Okay? In other words, don't do this. Bonk. And then still be moving the arms. Your weight should be transferring forward, and your hip should be squeezing close on this movement. Okay? And I'll ask you, but you don't have to answer, because I'll tell you the answer right away. This one cannot be Gyakuhamni, you cannot change, turn the hip past center. Why? Because you want equal power in each hand as soon as you turn past center, you, are, you start to create a rotational vector for this, these blocks. So if you are rotating, make it side to side block, yes, you can, you, you can go past center. If, you're, if, you're, you, if the um, power is supposed to be full, you want to stay dead center with your hips. Next is, uh, th this one actually does not mean, this means, that in the book it says this is Geiran Kamaya, it's not down block. Reason is, do the technique, okay, do it again. The reason is that Bunkai means that the opponent's grabbing the left wrist and you're slicing down the left arm with the right to release this grip. Okay. So this, in this case, in the position Mike's in now, his right arm is in, is in Kamai position. It wasn't a down block. Obviously, it is executed exactly like a down block. Just the meaning is not down block. Uh, second important thing about this movement, again, is that your, you want to shift forward along the center line, so you can't, you, you can't use the back foot as your, as your uh, shifting line. So this is, you have to shift forward in this motion, but you want to shift closer to where the front foot's pointed than the back foot. So the back foot actually comes in a little bit off its original line. Next one, So you just release the grip, the opponent is grabbing your wrist, 
Next one is Fudo Dachi. Your weight goes forward. And your two hands are... The position of this is not, is not uh, for the bow. They should be... This is almost the same as Basai Dai. Okay? The meaning is that you are grabbing the point here with your upper hand. In this hand, you're grabbing underneath here somewhere. And the next move, that means you're going to throw him over your shoulders. Uh, both your hands should be in the tiger mouth position. And in practice, and this is exactly like Basai Dai, so this means the point was punching to your face and you block with this arm. Block with this arm, then grab it, then put this hand between his legs. To do this movement and actually pull it off in Bukai, which is very dangerous because you, you're throwing the opponent from such a height and probably dropping him on his head, but we, we don't need really to demonstrate it, but to pull it off, you got to get your center gravity really low and you got to get your shoulders against their body and this arm under there, between their legs as far as you can. And then using your legs, you push up and you roll the person over your shoulders and straight, straighten up and it's your legs that's lifting them up in the air. And this is just follow through and he falls on his back. To get the imagery from your own experience of how this is possible, um, if you've done an exercise where your partner's back to back at, at the end of class and you've got your elbows locked and you're going to go down and you're going to pull him over so he's like relaxing over your back, you probably have experienced that some, you or other people are pulling and oh, I can't get him over. Okay, the reason you can't get him over is because his center of gravity is too, too low relative to yours. So if you, in, the next time you do this stretching exercise, you're going to get your center of gravity down below his, where your butt is below him, into his knees. Then you go like this. And so the action is actually the same as this, this throw of doing this stretch, stretching exercise. You get down low, you get under your center of gravity, and you stand up. Okay. So he grabs the opponent and he's going to throw him, but the next movement, obviously you don't have an opponent on your back. So the next bunkai means somebody sw swung a stick at your feet. So the two cannot be done at the same time. You're either doing one or the other. So a little adjustment of the kata to practice the different bunkais. Important thing about the jump is that you know, is that you must kiai in the air. You kiai at the top, at the top of the jump. Then you breathe in again while you still have your knees up, and then you breathe out as you land. Try to demonstrate. So this little breathe, this little uh, bringing your knees up, kiai in, and then breathing in again gives you more hang time. And the important thing about this movement is, is that in the air, you've got to be tucked way up with your knees way up against your chest and your hands in like this into a little ball. So, and some advocate that you cross your ankles, but I'm not sure what, why that makes a difference, but some people teach it that way. But the important thing is somebody is swinging a staff is that you get your, your feet off the ground, not how high you jump. That has to do with where they're swinging the staff at you, but if they're swinging at your feet, it's that you get your knees up. And last movement. Ends with knife hand block. Um, I, I have to believe the last movement is almost a let's see if you have your balance after jumping up in the air and landing. <laughs> but anytime, I said before, anytime the kata ends with a block, 
you in your mind have that feeling of that either it's an attack or in your mind what's the counter to finish the last opponent off. Otherwise, especially this one, Chiai, wham! And then if you just step back casually, you, you just ended the kata with a, a downer. You want to end the kata with a very uh, a spirited move. So 